analysis, let's now turn to Pavel Felgenhauer. He is a defense analyst and columnist for Novia Gazeta. He joins us now from Moscow. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. I want to start with what is the significance of Zelensky making this last-minute visit? It came, uh, you know, it was unexpected. And he's leaving Ukraine for the first time since the conflict began. Uh, well, this is a daring move by the president of Ukraine. He just visited the front lines in the beleaguered uh, city of Bakhmut that's been besieged by the Russian forces, and now he's in Washington. Now, it will be, I believe, a PR uh, breakthrough uh, uh, for the uh, Zelensky and his cause. He will uh, meet for a long meeting face-to-face -face with Biden and with his team, and he will speak to the joint session of Congress, and I'm sure he'll get a standing ovation, uh, those who want to distract from Ukrainian support. In Congress, will see themselves in a, a, a minority. That means support in Congress is going to continue, and Ukraine will get the weapons. It's, of course, it wants more as any fighting force once more, but they'll get quite a number of them coming up. Uh, so that's important, but of course that's uh, mostly PR, uh, but it's very important PR to give uh, political momentum to Zelensky internally and externally. So PR, but also some political clout, because nearly two billion in additional aid, including access to the Patriot defense missile system, which is something Zelensky has long been calling for, is now on the table. So how does Putin respond to that? I mean, he just visited Belarus and Lukashenko as well. He's a key ally this week. Surely that's not a coincidence, sir. Oh, sure. But of course, Belarus is um, basically Russians, uh, Russia's only ally in this conflict, a, re a real ally. Though they are not fighting on the battlefield, but they provided weapons and they provided their territory for attacks. But Russia has only one ally, and Zelensky has uh, a lot of allies and a lot of support. And in the war of um, industrial nations of the West, and uh, in a war of attrition, uh, it's hard for Russia to win against the coalition of countries that have a, a overall GDP 100 times more than Russia does. Uh, but the Russian, the Kremlin, believe that they can suffice, that they have enough weapons to cause harm to Ukraine and force them into a ceasefire that at least would recognize the status quo. That's right now apparently Russia's main objective, and to have reserves for to meet a Ukrainian offensive that most likely will come next month, the so-called winter offensive, defeat the Ukrainians in the field or at least stop them. And then Ukraine will be forced to negotiate on the line of control that Russia believes would be more or less as it is right now. And so the White House and lawmakers are reportedly considering formally designating Russia as an aggressor state. That will allow for additional sanctions. Do you think that will push Russia somehow to the negotiating table any sooner? Well, Russia wants to be at the negotiating table. Russia wants a ceasefire. Uh, pause and fighting for at least several years, a kind of Minsk III agreement, but a ceasefire based on uh, more or less freezing the situation as on the status quo. That's what Ukrainians do not want. They want Russia to withdraw, and uh, from a number of places where Russia does not want to withdraw. And so that's the main problem right now. Uh, Russia does not want to accept such uh, conditions. And, uh, of course, uh, de designating Russia as an aggressor state, uh, that would be seen as an insult. What I don't see is that really changing much on, on the ground at all. 